I posted this photo on Facebook recently and I got a lot of questions from people new to the post-apocalyptic costuming scene asking how exactly I achieved this look. I explained that it was dyed using a sponge and light layers and that it's really easy. To which someone said, Well Tag, not everyone can afford expensive dyes. Well joke's on you, I didn't use any. So if somehow you manage to afford an almost $200 ticket to a post-apocalyptic camping event but are resistant to buying a dye pack that costs a little over $3, I'll show you how to make grunge effects using stuff you probably already have in your kitchen. Like I said, it's super easy, so now you'll have absolutely no excuse to walk around in a perfectly clean costume. The first thing you'll need is a white or light colored piece of clothing made of cotton, linen, denim, or canvas. Something on the more absorbent side. That way we can go from something like this to something a little more like this. The second and third things you'll need are the key ingredients here. Black tea and salt. For this video, I used Twining's Christmas tea, but only because it was what I had lying around. I used four bags, but feel free to use more if you want a darker base to work from. You'll also need a container to store your dye bath in, a dirty sponge to apply it with, and for the later steps, you'll need some coffee. Alright, step one. Fill up a pot with water for your desired amount of dye, adding the tea bags early and stirring as it heats up to a near boil. As you're stirring, press the bags with a spoon to help get as much tea out of them as possible. Careful not to puncture them though, you'll end up having to use a strainer later if you do. Step 2. Add a generous amount of salt as you stir. This will help set and lock the dye in your clothing later. Keep an eye on your dye bath, and once the water reaches boiling, cover the pot, shut it off, and let it sit for at least an hour to half an hour to allow it to steep. Once the dye bath has completely cooled, collect it in a container for storage. It should be ready for use, but I usually let mine sit overnight just to let it settle. Now, using your sponge, begin applying the stain to your clothing. There's no hard fast rules about how to do this, but try to use different techniques to keep your work from looking too patterned. Irregularity tends to make the effect appear more organic, so drip the stain, splash it, wipe it, and uh, use both sides of the sponge. Focus on key areas to make the dye appear heavier in certain spots and just experiment with the look. Once the first coat is dry, it should look pretty subtle like this, but after the second or third, it should appear much darker. Layering the dye is important because it keeps it from looking boring and monotone. You want to let your clothing dry between each coat to assure it sets. You can leave it out in the sun, which usually helps the tea stain set in darker, or speed it up by using a dryer. Once you're happy with the medium to light stains, it's time to brew up some coffee and add the darker tones. Add it to the remainder of your dye bath with a little more salt and apply it sparingly. When it comes to the darker tones, it's easy to overpower the nice mid-tones you've already established, so less is more. After this step, I usually go in with a serrated knife or tool and drag it over the shirt to add some extra weathering and holes. This is an extra step that's not totally necessary and should only be done on thicker material that can handle it. If the material is too thin, it could damage the garment too much and it would just be a big hassle. And there you go, we're done. So once it's all over, your shirts look something like this. Tea staining is also at equity. It's easy and can be done last minute. No two techniques are ever the same, so you can take what I've showed you and definitely improve upon it. Now if you're working on a garment that's made of thicker, darker material, I highly suggest you visit the channel Nuclear Snail Studios. Dimitri has a plethora of great tutorials there on the subject, and I cannot advise you any better than he. That's it, we're done. Go make stuff.